late ill kid at one youngster holding it down bringing that street geek and nerd so what is up my people today is another special episode we are continuing the surviving r kelly series this is the second night which um they covered episodes three and four i am joined by the lovely lady lisa she is amazing she is super cool uh join me on the first episode lover to p says this is my wife but um before we get started into this yesterday yesterday we did kind of like the um what is it uh kind of like the initial thoughts and yeah. i feel like we're past that let me just say one thing before uh, i jump in yeah i just want to say this this one thing that had actually been on my mind earlier okay if because I've seen some people on Facebook saying, oh, why is everybody watching this? And I've seen some negativity about this being watched and this documentary being done. So I want to say this, if nothing else comes out of this documentary, the one good thing about it is it has us, meaning black folks, talking about uh, molestation, sexual abuse, which mm -hmm. we do not talk about as black folks. And that's why these things happen. Yep. So this has us talking because it is, it is plastered all over Facebook. I haven't looked at Instagram or anything else, but I know on Facebook, a lot of people are watching and a lot of people are talking about it. So if nothing else good or if nothing good comes out of this, that comes out of this, which I think is great. Yeah. Um, with that said, I'm gonna jump right in the first because yesterday I was I just kind of riffed. We just talked about it, how we felt, but there were certain things that I wrote down because I was getting angry. Yes. Watching these two. Yes. Uh, the first point that I wrote down is that everybody knew. Yep. This seemed to everybody. be. Yeah. This seemed to be a open secret in Chicago. Yeah. Um, this seemed to be something that many people knew about yep. and just kind of let go, let slide. And watching this became infuriating because at, in, in the first two episodes, you could say, oh, okay, it was like him and his boys. But then it became more apparent that it's not him and his boys. It's him, his boys, the teacher, the the principal, the the singers knew about the background singers, the yep. the uh, the player, the uh, you know drum players or guitar players, and you know road managers and that. Everybody. Everybody knew. Everybody knew. And so you're just allowing this guy to continue to operate in this space. Yeah. <sighs> I. And again, I'm gonna say, like I said yesterday, where is your mama? Where are the where are the mothers? Because I understand you have teenage girls here and there. You know, I understand. You know, you may have come from a single parent household. You know, mom has to work; she can't be watching all the time. But we're talking about a number of these girls. Yeah. Like, what is going on? It, ain't nobody mama watching them. No. What is going on? Well, there's so much money wrapped up in this. There's so much stardom and celebrity that people are just kind of allowing him to do whatever he wants and not standing in his way. It's like, yes, Mr. Kelly. Yes, right this way, Mr. Kelly. Of course, Mr. Kelly. Of That's right, Mr. Kelly, because the money's flowing. Money is flowing from left to right. What was the, the guy that said that uh, when they were talking about the tapes, the guy said uh, uh, old friend and like former uh, security guard or something was like, yeah. he was like, I saw some of the tapes, but you know, when I saw this tape, it was too much. Like, it was, yeah, why? I was like, well, what, what was the other tapes? Like, the other tapes weren't enough for you? Right, because my thing is this. I understand you saying the P tape was too much. But how come the tapes with just underage girls without the pee, how come that wasn't too much? As soon as you see a little girl, how come that isn't too much? How come, why does the pee, why is the pee the thing that takes it over the top? That's, 
out. Yeah. And one thing I'll say um, before we jump off this and go into the next one. But uh, there's a moment where Sparkle says, shame on you, shame on you. And when I watched this this episode three and four, I'm like, shame on all of you. Yeah. All of you. In the first yesterday, I said, this is, there are varying degrees of complicity. And honestly, after watching episode three and four, this is basically just like, this isn't even varying degrees of complicity. I mean, yes, but... All of these de- degrees are closer to the to the dark side than the light. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, you take you take the longtime friend and the security guard. He said he had seen tapes. So what else did you need to see? Exactly. What made this one tape the magical tape that you know what I'm saying? Or Sparkle. Sparkle talking about um Sparkle talking about uh, you know, I had to protect my family. Well, when did you decide to do that? Thank you. You know, or old girl that knew good and well Shorty was young when she had the threesome with her, but she just didn't want to ask because she didn't want to know. Right. Well, you became complicit the moment you looked at her and knew she was young. Right, because my thing is Now, this- of course, you're, you're in control of your own decision. She decided to be that cool. But now you're engaging with something with someone else. Like, I'm looking at all these people, like, all of y'all. Now, of course, R. Kelly is the top head ringleader. Right. But all of y'all are parts of this circus. Thank you. And, and you know, not to, let me say, not to defend R. Kelly in any way, shape, or form. I'm just all about everybody taking responsibility for their part. And how much and how much that their inactivity, how much their silence, how much their yes manning or yes womaning allowed him to continue. Thank you. Because there were victims that need didn't need to be victims. And so many times when somebody could have and should have said something starting all the way back to the music teacher who made the comment about he he always liked young girls and she tried to tell him, yeah. you know, leave these young girls alone. That was years and years ago. To the administrator, I think he was the vice principal who said he didn't know why he was always hanging around and he's at the games and stuff and doesn't understand. You're an administrator. It's your job to say, look, you can't be here around these young girls. I, you know, you're, you're, you're talking to them and it's not appropriate. And it's At not, all. and it's not right. And, and I can't have you doing this. And just like you would say something is a workplace danger, he has made that school ground unsafe for girls because he's supposed to be protecting them, and he's Absolutely. allowing R. Kelly to come around where he knows exactly what. Because now, after after seeing this part two and three, I mean three and four, everybody knew. Everybody knew. Now, as a as a as a Christian, I got to get on, on the next point. When when this fool R. Kelly said that he was in trouble and he had to pray and ask for Jesus. All right. Jesus ain't coming to help you. I'm just, I'm, now, what I don't are know, you praying I, for exactly? I, I can't speak for Jesus. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'll venture to guess that... Out of everything that you've done, because it's not like it's a mistake. Like you, you met a girl and you didn't know her age and y'all fell in love and, you know, had sex. And, oh, man, I didn't know she was 15 or something. No, you have orchestrated a ring of criminal intent and criminal activity to hide, to shuffle around, to pay off, to have sex, to manipulate all of these young girls. Jesus ain't answering that prayer. Yeah, because I'm I mean, I'm trying to are you asking for Jesus to 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 help you to not do this anymore? Or do you want Jesus to just get you out of trouble? Right. Because Jesus doesn't doesn't preach no consequences and you know yeah. the whole thing about reaping and sowing. Like I, <sighs> it just it I couldn't roll my eyes harder when that fool said he prayed with him. Are you kidding me? Like, pr- 
What y'all praying for? Well, he said because Kelly came to him and said he couldn't stop making these tapes. And oh, he no. Needed, he needed to pray to help him to stop making the tapes. Well, the tapes in and of itself ain't the issue. Stop doing this stuff to have something to tape. Can yeah. we pray on that? Yeah, because see, the tapes... The tapes you only issue. want he only wanted to pray about the tapes because the tapes was getting him in trouble. Yeah, don't don't blame the Maxell. Tapes, the tapes was evidence. That's yeah, what he you know he wanted to pray to Jesus. Jesus, please stop, help me to stop making evidence of what I'm doing. Yeah, don't blame JVC for this. Mm -hmm. They ain't did nothing. All right. And the first one you you spoke about Lisa, mm -hmm. and Lisa is full. Of crap. Lisa got on my nerves. Remember when we first saw Lisa, when Lisa first opened her mouth, I was like, mm. There's something wrong with this story. But now seeing this, the whole thing about taking the tape to extort money from him, when she could have took that tape and given it to the authorities, I'm like, if you don't get out of my face, like, because... Yo. And she talking I, about she looking at the tapes because she want to see what's on them. You know no, you want to make sure you're not on Think it. Then you wanted to find the tape you was on. My thing is this. Don't get on here and lie. Yeah. See, it's, Because see, what you do is you end you, up tainting this documentary. Right. And you want us to look at you as a complete victim. And I understand the manipulation. However, a whole lot of this is more wrong decisions on her particular part. Yeah. Not saying for all of these girls, but for her in particular. She played a large this, part in his manipulation. She played a large part in her own vic in her old victimization. Yeah. Let's just be real like with that. Lisa and is, I, I know some people gonna have some things to say about this, but let's just be real about this, okay? Lisa should not be in the group with these other women. Lisa is full of crap. Yeah. She's 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 and doing I, a whole lot of double talking. And the only reason I'm saying crap is because this is a family show, yeah. guys. Yeah, she's and doing a know. whole lot of double talking and a, and saying a whole lot of things that don't make sense according to what she said before. Yeah, she's contradicting herself in a lot of places, and I don't like it. Don't get on here. You don't need to fabricate the story. And then old all girl of, trying all to of, cry with it. Yeah, don't fabricate the story. Just tell the story like it is. You know because. It's coming, we're seeing seeing the truth. You know, you, you watch the tapes because you wanted to find the tape that you were on. You yeah. knew you were on you one of the get, tapes. You wanted to get rid of the tape that you were on. Let's be honest. Because you knew, like, look, one tape already came out. I yep. don't know what's going to come out next. I need to find my tape. You know, let's, come on, just be real about this. And then want to cry when she said... They brought up the idea of killing her. What did you think? Well, I mean, I understand her crying about that because that's, that has to be horrifying. Yeah, but what did you think? When you get this far, as far as he's going to keep people silent, there's, see, peop, human human beings, we have, you know, diminishing returns. We gotta, we always gotta go higher, 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 higher. Well, my thing so is this, I can... So if he's going this far to keep girls silent, to hide y'all from y'all families, to do this, change phone numbers, keep y'all doors locked and all this, what do you think? Do you think he's afraid of someone disappearing? But my thing you is, you gotta this, be very you, worried about this type of man in our right, Kelly. Right, but but I can understand her crying about that and, and that, you know, taking her to another place mentally and emotionally. That's a whole nother level. Cause see, it seems to me with her, you know, it was this whole, cause she was just deep into this whole you know, sex thing with him and trying different stuff and doing yeah. different stuff. She was really, really deep into it and, and voluntarily. Now, there may have been sort of some coercion and a little bit of manipulation, but she did a whole lot. You know, that was in over a span of years, you know, and, and not with him holding her there. She did a whole lot of back and forth, back home and leaving. And, yep. you know, so it got to the point was this is just what she did. And... So I think she felt like maybe, that was maybe that was she their felt she thing. She didn't deserve better or whatever. I, don't, I, I know. don't know. But then I think to to get to the point where it's like somebody's talking about killing you, that has to be a whole other thing. Yeah. That has to really be a whole. And she, I would hope that she knew that if he wanted to have it done, it would be done based on definitely. You know yeah, what everybody was doing around him anyway. I don't doubt that. 
Um, now, we jumped on Lisa. I did, you brought me around on Andrea. Um, but I still think that Andrea either had to be extremely gullible or extremely just oblivious because even though he may, let's say he hid every single other side chick away from him, away from her. She still had to knock on the door to come out and eat a meal. Yeah. I'm not, like, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at her like, hold up. So, okay, what you mean to tell me is, all right, you ain't never seen not one other girl ever, ever, ever. Okay, fine. But, okay. Lisa and, and, said she was downstairs when she had to knock on the door. She, You ain't see Lisa? You ain't see her? It wasn't Lisa. Was it Lisa? Le- or it was another girl besides was, Lisa? I thought it was Sparkle. Oh, okay. Maybe it was Sparkle. I thought it but was any- Sparkle. Anyway, whoever it was, she saw somebody when she was locked up in the room and couldn't eat a sandwich well, this is or whatever. The thing. This is okay. No, no, let's let's think about this. And that in R. Kelly did yes, he was running girls in and out. But in her defense, he could easily say, you know, this is my upcoming artist. You know, we're recording, we're rehearsing, we're doing this, we're doing that. Because I'm imagining there are so many people in and out of the house, you know, actually recording and and doing legitimate business. He can mix in these girls easily. Yeah, but it's just for her to be with him so long, it's it's tough for me to buy this whole forget. I knew nothing. Don't mess. forget, he was manipulating her too. Don't forget, from the very, very, very beginning, he manipulated her. Remember when they were on a road together well, yeah, and he yeah, first right. met her? Yeah. And because he changed her phone he number and she didn't know and, and stuff, know. and then then the secret wedding and stuff. So, all right, I'll I'll lean up off of her, but I do think if she's not if she's not turning a blind eye, then she is extremely oblivious. And if she's that oblivious, she needs to hurry up and get remarried or whatever because she got three kids that's like, shoot, I ain't even barely got to tell a whole lot of my mom. I do what I want. She, apparently, you got women upon women upon women. Dude that's making you knock on the door to eat a meal and you, and I know she was a victim. You know, like, don't get me wrong. She was victimized. But, It's hard for me not to see her in the same shade of complicity or maybe maybe a a lighter shade Mm -hmm. of complicity than the others. Um, Uh, You know, I really don't. I mean, I feel you. Because she had me in some parts thinking she was lying. Then she had me thinking, is she just dumb? You know, and then she had me some parts where I'm like, is she oblivious? Like, is I just really think he he kept he purposely orchestrated her being so separate from everything and then like I said it seemed like it was just so many people in and out of the house he could easily say that's my new artist or you know we're rehearsing or this Mm -hmm. that and the third because it wasn't just a regular house it's it's you know this place where they happen to live but there's all this other stuff going on and between him keeping her separate from everything and then whatever she does the just brushing it over or lying about it you know, I could see how, how how that could happen. Not to mention in the midst of all this foolishness, she's trying to raise children. Yeah. Now, I will say that's the part that it just, it just struck me as really just heart-wrenching that if, if she truly knew nothing, because she said that her friend said she went limp and dropped her baby. Yeah. So if she really truly knew nothing all that time, that had to hit her like a like a ton of bricks. Yeah. You know, she like, yo, I just had to be induced labor, blah, blah, blah. I look up on the screen the email. Yeah. So if she truly knew nothing, I I empathize and feel sorry for her experience. Because that thing had to fly out of nowhere. And I can't imagine, you know, the calls, the TMZ, that everybody want to know, to hear the question, to hear the answers and all, you know, 
all that mess. The only while thing while you got an infant. The only thing that I'm gonna say, ah, <laughs> and I said it when we were talking about it before. Nobody can say they didn't know nothing. They they may not know everything, but nobody can say they didn't know nothing after Aaliyah. Yeah, you're right. After, after Aaliyah, Aaliyah, I don't want to hear it. You yeah. knew something. You knew you knew something was not right about him because he married this young girl. Just so yes, I take issue with that. Yes. So I, I, I kind of on a fence with her now that I go back to even thinking about that because how do you, as his wife, come to terms with that? How do you make that okay? Yeah. Did you sit down and have a conversation with him about it? Because that happened before they got married. Mm -hmm. So obviously. So did you sit down and have a conversation? I mean, did y'all date like... And it seems weird, too, because it doesn't seem like they dated, per se, because she was his a dancer for him. Mm -hmm. And so I don't even know what that is. You know, like y'all were dealing with each other, obviously, but there was no real dating. Yeah, um, I think I think they had. So y'all didn't have any important conversations such as that, because, I mean, to me, that's one of the most important things to bring up. We need to talk about this whole thing with you and Aaliyah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll give you that one. Um, another big part of these episodes three and four was just the trial, the reporting, mm. the uh, the protection, the pushback. Uh, the reporting was very... It, it was very tight mm -hmm. compared to what I thought it was. Because when I was younger when this was going on. So to give you guys an idea, I was born in 82. So when this was going on, you're talking about 2000-ish. So I'm like, I graduated high school in 2000. So you're looking at either I was like a junior or a senior in high school, something like that. And I remember this going on. And I mean, of course, this is a very Chicago thing. Mm. So what we got in Virginia on the news, I just knew, oh, there was a sex tape of some sort, right. you know, this is sex tape and he's gonna go to court and you know, he's, he's a younger underage girl or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking to myself and talking to my boys like, yo, didn't he get in trouble behind Aaliyah? Right. Like I just remember being like, yo, what this dude in trouble behind Aaliyah? Like you didn't yeah. learn then? Well, what was there to learn? He didn't well, get, yeah. he didn't really get in trouble. Well, yeah, that's true. So it, what, it, what, it got annulled and it was kind of like silence. Right. And you lost an artist. You you, you yeah. got annulled and you lost an artist. Okay. Yeah. You and know. the the thing that was so powerful about this whole story about the reporting is the amount of pushback that we got from his team. Uh, it seems like from the music industry as a whole was kind of pushing against this whole like pedophile narrative. They were either pushing back or silent. Yeah. They were like, they were like, look, we ain't gonna say nothing about it. We ain't got nothing to say. Um, and then, what is it? Um, Sparkle said that there was a music executive that said, essentially, yo, do you know how much money he makes us? Right. Like, like yes, we're gonna. That, you know, you know I don't, I don't care. I don't care if the, I don't care how old oh, the girl is. And two, for R. Kelly. I am not trying to take any of his musical genius away. He has made great music. Yeah, the but my enjoyment of music should not come at the cost of some girl's soul. Yeah, because um, because we have to understand people. The, we're talking about two two totally separate entities. His 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 being a a pedophile um, does not mean his music wasn't great. No one can sit here and deny anything to do with his music, you know, to, you know, but at the same time, his music doesn't negate the fact that he's a pedophile. It's two separate entities. Yeah. It's, it, you know, in, in, in terms of talking about that, you know, one does not negate the other. 
So, you know, that that in and of itself should not be an issue. But like you said, no one should want to sacrifice these sacrifice these girls for his music. You know, yeah. now, and like it, it you said, like though, the industry. Oh, go ahead. Like you said, though, it comes down to money. Yeah. And unfortunately for a lot he of was people, a golden goose. It's, it's funny how you move goalposts and them standards go limp, you know, when you talk about money. Yeah. And I mean, everybody, you know, everybody has their price. But of course, R. Kelly was rolling in the dough. Uh, Sparkle made a statement about he offered her the high six figures. And so, guys, if you if you're listening, you want to put the math together real quick. Six figures is hundreds of thousands of dollars. There's three zeros. There's a comma and there's three more zeros. So if he said if she said the high six figures, we're assuming that it's at least above five hundred thousand dollars. So let's say it was six hundred. Six hundred thousand dollars to just offer that to someone. Yeah. If you've got six hundred thousand dollars just to offer someone, and it's not going to break you, where you still got money, like R. Kelly was making people money for real. Yeah, he was. And you know, unfortunately, when you're in an industry like the music industry or Hollywood or something like that, cash is king. Yeah. And they're like, how much money does this person make? Yeah. Versus someone who, you know, doesn't make no money or some little random girl. We don't know some, you know, some girl from, I don't know, say, you know, Kentucky or something. There ain't nobody worrying about her. This yeah. dude just got us Grammy Awards and we all on the radio and selling records and doing endorsements and everything and making, bring, bringing us more artists and blah. Man, please. I ain't worried about some little girl saying she had sex. And it just shows it just shows the culture of celebrity and how far success can take you and shield you. Yeah. And hurt you. Because this is this has hurt him. Because honestly, let's say R. Kelly, if someone really sat him down and got him some real serious help after Aaliyah, we might not be here. Instead of of kissing his butt and yes manning him all the time, if they really took hold of him, if if, if the music industry, the execs, his friends, all these runners for him, all the security guards and singers there if everybody that was on his team plus execs and everybody was like look we ain't dealing with you until you get this straight you get this taken care of you need some help you need to go see somebody you need to talk about we gonna sit you down yeah until you get yourself right and if you can't get yourself right you can't come back you never know we could be looking at a changed man this could this could be a documentary about it someone who came through the other side. That's true because- But nobody we, ever stood up to him. Right. Nobody, and, well, except Sparkle, but that wasn't until she, until he uh, uh, abused her own niece. Yeah, well, Because no, if no. she, she's supposed to be one of his oldest background singers. Right. She's seen some young girls come through there. That's true. She had to have. That's true. She never spoke up then. That's didn't care, true. Didn't and care I, about them girls. And that- you know, now all of a sudden you want to protect your family when it's your niece. Right. Guess like that you, that other girl was someone else's niece. And you could have protected her by not even bringing her in there. You knew who he was. Because my thing, like I said, is you felt like it was okay for you to bring her because you were going to watch her. And the plan was she would never be there without you. Now, let me add, let's break this down. Yeah. So you're bringing her into a situation that you know she needs to be protected from to the extent that she can't be there without you. Why the freak are you bringing her in there at all? At all. And with that said, uh, one little note that I wrote down is that Sparkle's failure is so far reaching in this in this story 
She failed her niece. She failed her family. She failed herself. Yeah. Indirectly, in a way, since she's been here since the beginning, she's failed R. Kelly as a friend. If y'all were supposed to be so tight and cool and everything ever since all the way back then, could have sat his butt down a long time ago and been like, you need to stop. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell the authorities on you or get somebody involved. Something. She did nothing. So she she failed tons of people. And now I wanna call talk about some shame on you. No one in this situation was his real friend. I don't think he allowed anyone around him as a friend. I think whatever friends he had were long gone before any of this. Because like you said, yeah. a real friend would have would have been able to sit him down and be like, man, what are you doing? And I think anybody who ever did that, he got rid of them a long time ago. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. And not even, not even his brothers could like, yeah. Matter of fact, yeah, let's issue. get on the brothers. Let's first, let's talk about the full brother. <sighs> what is Bruce? I think is the older one. Bruce is the oldest brother. The one that's in jail. He is exactly where he need to be. Thank you. Cause this fool here don't nobody co go outside with no uh, free Bruce shirt on, all right? Cause that fool where he need to be. This, oh okay, dumb. Calling him dumb is an insult to dumb people, cause he is truly he is a mixture. Of, he is a perfect storm of dumb, ignorant, and and seemingly arrogant as well. Yeah, but. This fool had the nerve in the first two episodes somewhere. He said, oh, it's just a preference. I prefer older women. You know, he just prefer younger women. No, these are children. Thank you. But let's step, let's step into this one. In three and four, this fool was talking about how happy he was when, uh, when he was not guilty. And then furthermore to say that when he offered... His younger brother... R. Kelly um, offered his younger brother. R. Kelly offered his younger brother, not Bruce, sorry. Uh, R. Kelly offered his younger brother the money to go and be like, yo, man, I, I retract everything I said about R. Kelly. And he didn't take it. He was like, he's a fool or whatever. It's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me? The, the level... It, it's not like... And once again, this is not like he met a young girl that he didn't know was as young as he thought she was. Like, say say he met, say this was a story about a guy that met a girl that was 16 that he thought was 19 and he was 23, right. okay? Mm -hmm. And and they, they fell in love and, and they got in a relationship and he was like, oh my God, she's 16, but you know, I'm already in love and you know, the star crossed paths and blah, blah, blah. This is not the case. Not the case at all. No. And you're you're sitting there standing up for someone who has put together an elaborate ring of just manipulation, of payoffs, of intimidation to girls that are 13, 14, 15 years old, really? It's I can't I, Why I, would you encourage that? Yeah, I, I can't wrap my mind around this. I just really, I just can't wrap my mind around this. The the number of people that knew something was going on. Not saying everybody knew details. Yeah, they didn't know no, every no, single. Nobody yeah. knew deep details for some time. But you all knew that he was dealing with young girls. Y'all mm -hmm. knew. You saw them going in and out. You talk about in this documentary coming into the studio and there are random young girls just sitting around. And and, and honestly, uh, Sparkle did make a good point about nobody in the music, or maybe it wasn't her, but somebody said nobody in the music industry ever spoke up against uh, Kelly. Nope. Not a soul. And, and I was talking to you offline about Jay-Z and R. Kelly. You know, how they had their thing at, on tour and Ever since we ain't heard Jay Z dang near mention R. Kelly, we ain't heard them talk about each other. We ain't seen them together. They've been, they have been completely just 
out of each other's way ever since then. Yeah, and you were saying it could have very well been that R. Kelly tried this crap, yeah, you know, on while tour, he was in on of tour, him and Jay Z's like, no, we're not rolling like that, you know, because it's guilt by association. You know, at that point, you know, it's, you know, I'm sure R. Kelly probably tried getting his people bringing in some young girls and. Any stand-up man, I would hope, would be like, "We're not doing this here." Yeah, we're, you know, we ain't doing this. Yeah, this is this isn't what this ain't the thing. These young girls cannot be here, not with me. You know, you know. So, I, I it, it's because you're looking when you look back at all the people that he's worked with or worked around. You're like, yo, this has to be something that tons of people knew about or at least got a whiff of. Yeah. You know, it's no different than the than Hollywood where it's like, yo, people knew Harvey how Harvey got down. Yeah, because they talked know, this is the thing. They, they they talked about it afterwards. And my yeah. thing is everyone thinks there's glory in saying, Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I, I was knew there. Oh, I knew Oh yeah. Here we go. Yeah. It happened to me years ago. It's like it's like they're saying it you know, like there's some glory out of that to be able to say, oh yeah, he did that to me. And so you're telling me he did that to you all those years ago. You denied him, which I think you're trying to make this glorious thing, but you never said anything, which meant you had the opportunity to say something and prevent all of these girls, this whole line of girls, for, you had the opportunity to prevent them from being victims but you didn't say or do anything or didn't even try didn't even try or I'm sorry to say you gave in to his advances benefited because you had a career afterward because it was a whole if you do this I'll do this for you and you benefited but now you want to jump on the train of this is what he did to me but you were okay with it yeah. e okay because see enough. that's sort of where Lisa is in in her situation. You know what I'm saying? She she definitely so decided to come back. I'm so, so that's, done with Lisa. Yeah, that's why I don't even I am so I'm so angry with everybody on the like on these two episodes that it's not even funny. Um I did since it's since it's sad about what happened to Andrea or Andrea, I can't uh, remember how they pronounce it, but the family, the child support, all of that, the R. Kelly was just like, I ain't paying it. And the funny thing is, it's not like he's hard to find. It's He's R. Kelly. So I'm still wondering how, you want to know how? Because of power, because mm -hmm. of celebrity. Because yeah. you think they can't find him? You think they don't they aren't able to get his 1099 or W-2s yeah. or a check or something or take a bank account or take of course, because they do it to regular dudes all the time. All the time. They will they will garnish your check so fast or go or go straight into the look, the government will take money straight out your bank account. Yes, they will. But somehow R. Kelly, they they can't collect from him somehow. Once again, celebrity strikes again. Like because there is no way you're gonna tell me that you can't get or you can't collect from R. Kelly. Yeah, this whole thing is such a mishmash. It's 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 not it's not at all um, cut and dry. It's so many different things going on so many different dynamics you have you have at, at the of course at the center of it this man who was a victim of sexual abuse himself who turned into an abuser to the to the utmost yeah you know and you mix that with some very vulnerable young girls who are naive. Some do just want a chance to be a star. Others, in their mind, think what they want 
is to be with this star. Yeah. And then when they go there and they're being trying to be grown up and it turns into something they did not expect it to be. In their mind, it's going to be exciting and it's going to be fun. And it turns into this dark thing where this man is doing these sexual things to them that they never even knew existed. They yeah. didn't even know, had never heard of these things, let alone thought about doing these things. So now they're being presented with these things that their bodies are not ready for, True. their minds are not ready for, and definitely their spirits are not ready for. Yeah. And that's sad. You, that, that, that's really the sad part. So you have that. Then you have girls like Lisa, who she was a bit older when she started dealing with him. I think she was like 16 when she started dealing with him. And she's doing the back and forth thing. You know, she, she, she went in being sexual with him. Let's just be real. Yeah. She went in being sexual with him and then she kind of did the back and forth, fought her mother, telling her mother she's going to Chicago to see him regardless. She goes back home for a little bit, goes back with him, and she dives into this whole dark life of, of you know, sex with him involving other young girls. And she tries to backpedal with that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that she I was that young. I didn't know she young. was 14. You know. And once we, we never had sex again after she was 14. Really? That Because that was your decision, right? Right, because she, yes, because she tried to say, she tried to say that R. Kelly was inadvertently, she didn't say force, but she insinuated that he was forcing her into these situations yeah. of the, of the three, of the uh, three way. But then yeah. she says, well, after that, I didn't want to do it anymore. So you had a choice. I'm trying to understand how does somebody force you to continue to do this? But then when something happens that you don't like, you can just say, well, I'm not doing it anymore. Well, that means you could have said that before. So I don't, let's not construe this. Look, let's not get on here and lie. Let's please, if we're going to come out and tell the truth and tell this story, tell it. Own your parts in it. Yeah. Own it. It does not take away from what R. Kelly did. He, yeah, no, you know, it doesn't. He did what he did, but there's so much complicity across the board here. There's there's so much either complicity, silence, yes man, money's flowing, whatever. Bad choices, you know, and I'm sorry, people are going to be upset about this, whatever. Some of these girls, it's a matter, you made some terrible choices. You made some terrible choices and I understand he was there waiting for your bad choices. He was there encouraging your bad choices. But at the same time, you made some bad choices and then you get out of the situation and then you go back. You get older. The girl Lisa was with him for three years. Three years. Yeah. So she was 19 years old. Leaving and coming back. Now I understand mentally and emotionally at that point, there is a tie. But come on now. Come on now. And speaking of that tie, um, I think the last thing, or one of the last things I really want to jump on is during the trial, the whole kind of groupy element oh, Lord. that surrounded just like the, the court buildings and, and the and the jails where they're screaming like I love you and you know cheering for them and everything. And I'm looking at these women like they've gotta know what he's going to trial for, right? Like now, to their credit, they may have been like, you know what? I don't believe it's him, but I believe it was more of, I don't want to believe it's Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Not that I don't believe Absolutely. it's him. Absolutely. Because the video, when you have people that have grown up with him saying that that is him in the video. And again, 
when in doubt, go back to Aaliyah. I'm sorry, after Aaliyah, you can't be saying, oh, no, 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 because nobody can say that did not happen with Aaliyah. Nobody can say that. Yeah, that's that's a factual account. So that's any, not a he said, she said. So. Oh, my God. And, 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 and can we talk about the, the, the young lady who was there? cheering on r kelly at the yeah, trial that's that's what i wanted to get to uh i can't remember the young lady's name it was like Just some with something. a j some yeah. with a j um and excuse me for not remembering her name but she's you know she's at the at the uh court building you know cheering them on and i guess giving them support she was a freshman in high school when, when this began she said she was a freshman in high school yeah and her mom was a single single mother, so she worked and she said, you know, I could skip school and do whatever I wanted. Bad choice. Also, why is she skipping school and the school is not contacting her mother to tell her that she's skipping school? That, yep. That's a whole other thing. The, no wellness checks or nothing? Nothing. So, bad choice. Also, school failing the youth by not doing a wellness check. Because if she was... Now, maybe she only skipped one day, but the no, idea... No, she said she was I, there consistently. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was I was about to get I was about to give you that. Maybe if she only skipped one day. But she was skipping day after day to go to this court to, you know, yell and scream his name. And she, you know, case ends, he's not guilty. And to her dumb credit, he was found not guilty. So I guess in her mind and many other people's minds, like, oh, he didn't do it. It's like, well, let's not go that far. We all saw the tape. He's found not guilty because I don't know, because celebrity. Everybody that's found not guilty and, doesn't mean they didn't do it. And the way he's been paying people off. We don't know if those jurors were contacted or not. We don't know if those jurors did not receive any type of payment. We don't know. Because R. Kelly is known to pay people off by this point. It was disturbing, that interview of that one juror, that white man who, who said, look at the way they dress, look at the way they behave. I didn't believe them. That was very disturbing. Yeah, that was super duper racist. That was, that was, yeah, and that was disturbing that he pretty much said because of the way they quote unquote were behaving and the way they dressed, he didn't believe, you know, these, these women. And it's like, oh, you are a juror. Yeah. All righty. You know, but yeah. And, and so this young lady was contacted by R. Kelly as well as one of R. Kelly's henchmen, whatever you want to call yeah. him, that and said he wanted to see her, you know. So she goes to see him, and you know he tells her, "Oh, it's a secret. You can't tell anybody. I want you to bring your bathing suit." And she's just like, "Okay," you know. And I think she says at one point when he's telling her to do stuff, she quote says, "It's R. Kelly." So that's what he told me to do. Yeah. So I did it. And it's like, yeah. you don't see anything wrong with that sentence. Yeah. And it's funny because the Boondocks episode even made fun of that line where she was like, it's R. Kelly. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, he, you know, he's the king of R&B, the Pied Piper or whatever. And the way she got involved and the way she continued on and the way she told this story of being, you know, not only kind of like slowly maneuvered out of her virginity. That was and so then bring, sad. Yeah, it was so sad because she even talked about it like, you know, it just happened. Yeah. You know, because of course in her mind, she was probably thinking, so R. Kelly is going to be so sexy and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yep. And R. Kelly doesn't care about you. you don't Not see, at all. All he sees in you is another young girl that he's going to have. Yep. That's it. And then made her go get one of her friends. And unfortunately, she did. And I ain't going to front. 
as sad as her story is, as dumb as it is at sometimes, due to the fact that she was skipping school and going there and then believed him and all this mess, she then became complicit once she once she uh, recruited that other girl. Well, it's hard to call her complicit because she she is still the victim in, well, in this. Yes, I mean, so it's it's. I know what you're saying, but at the same time, and I'm time, not. I'm not saying complicit at the same level as R. Kelly. But you can't. I mean, it. It's just tough. You well, know what I'm I think that was one of those situations where she was very young and naive. And my thing is, just listening to her, she was really searching for something. You know, her mother clearly was working and, and yeah. not at all available. And this girl was on her own to do whatever. And she had been molested throughout her right, young life already. Which was very dangerous. And I don't know if her mother knew she was molested. We don't know that. Yeah, see, her mother might not even know. And so this young girl needed some love. She needed some guidance. She needed some rules. She needed some structure. And she had none of that. And then you have this pedophile this 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 man that just jumped on that and i think the re probably the reason why after all of that happened with the trial the reason why he remembered her is because he i'm sure in his mind thought this girl is here every day she don't have anybody looking for her she don't have nope. anybody watching out for her i could easily take her and do whatever and no one is going to know the difference we need to contact her. We need to find her. I can add her yeah. to my collection. Yeah. And I think that was the, the common denominator with most of these young girls is that they were able to come and go as they please. They had probably working single mothers, you know, who just were working and, and really unfortunately didn't have the time to really watch them like they needed to be watched and to nurture them and guide them and protect them like they needed to. And he was out there looking for that. Mm -hmm. And and it's sad because, R. Kelly, these are your people. These are your black sisters. Yeah. And you're taking advantage of a situation where, you, you know, unfortunately, they're just kind of out there. And you're ready to just snatch them up. It's... This is so deep and it's so many pieces yeah, to the, all of this. So much deeper than I would have even imagined. Because I remember when they, when, uh, cause we see the mother of, what's her name? Danielle, whatever. The, one I of the young the ladies D. that. Something with a D. Yeah. And the mother's name is Michelle Kramer, I believe. And. You know, when she showed up, that's the new story that we remember. She was the young lady that the girl recruited. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, the mom shows up, dad shows up or whatever, and they're trying to get her out the house and everything. And that was on the news. We, we all remember that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the most recent kind of, like, big incident. And that's the one where the mom called R. Yeah. Kelly and yeah. said, my name is such and such. Yeah. I want you to remember my name. And don't you come around my girl, my little, my daughter ever again. And yeah. I think he probably saw that as a challenge in. Yeah, it probably made it worse. But I right. will say this. Thank God for her. I mean, yeah, she probably worked crazy shifts or did whatever. But out of all these years, it seemed like she's the only one that showed up. Well, remember, she got a phone call from another mom that said, do you know where so-and-so is? She's like, oh, she's with her friend. She's like, she's been lying to you. So oh, I don't so know yeah, how even, that happened. Even she was lying to her mom. And see, that's another thing. These decisions. Decisions, boy. And now, and these decisions then got you in a, in a, in a mansion where you got a text message someone you know to see if y'all can sneak and go to the bathroom to actually see each other. What kind of existence is that? And I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm gonna say this, you know, and I'm gonna be honest. You know, as a teenage girl, I did some things I shouldn't have done and made some bad decisions. And only by the grace of God, only by the grace of God was I never hurt, never harmed, 
you know, because I, looking back, I, I made some horrible decisions, being naive, being stupid, not paying attention to the, the gravity of the decisions I was making, paying attention to the people that were around me, not realizing I don't know these people. You know, yeah. I don't know this boy. You don't, you don't really know these people. You don't really know. And you, again, only the grace of God kept me because I was, I have been in situations that I should not have been in making stupid decisions, trying to be grown, you know, thinking I'm grown. And I'm telling you, especially as young girls, you know, teenagers in general, but especially as young girls, these decisions you make a lot of times one small what you think is a small decision changes the whole path of your life it yeah. changes your life forever and yeah. it's sometimes you can't come back now let's think about this what if r kelly was just a tad bit crazier and not only did he like doing this to young girls but he liked killing them true and we know he has the power and money to make you disappear. And especially that young lady where he told her, don't tell nobody, you're coming here, it's a secret. And so she's there by herself. Nobody knows where she is. And say he decided he was going to kill her. Nobody would have known where to begin to look for her. These, these people in general, the, I'm, I'm going to talk to my young, to my young men and women, be very wary of celebrities and celebrity culture. Mm. Celebrities, they, it seems like you know them because you know their music or you might know their work like you know that there are uh, you might know their comic books or you know their music or you know their tv shows or you know their movies but you do not know the person you don't know their spirit yeah you don't know the person behind that behind that role you don't no matter how many interviews you read or watched you don't really know that person you know i it's, you know, it's true. These are, these are decisions that a lot of kids make. You know, oh, I'll lie to my mom and tell her I'm this and I'm going to go there. But, like you said, R. Kelly could like killing them. That, that, who knows? Because here's the thing. We know he's already smacking them. We know he's already grabbing them and dragging them down the hallway. That's been said. And sometimes things escalate further. Yeah. What if he was, what if he was truly hurting you, not like a smack in the face because you, but truly hurting you, like broken bones. Then what? You know, look at the situation you would be in then. And I mean, I understand being young and wanting to like do cool stuff or you have you know you you know you meet someone that you've been you know you've been a fan of for years and years and years yeah and let's not forget he's impregnated some of these girls yeah giving them stds that's Multiple life changing girls. that's life changing yeah they've had abortions or lost babies that changes that stays with you forever that's mm -hmm. life changing yeah because you thought this was gonna be some really exciting and sexy and when oh he chose me. He oh I can't wait till I tell my girls he chose me. This and wasn't you, what you thought it was gonna be. And then you get to the mansion and find out you number, you know, you took a number. And it's not at all what you thought it was gonna be. There's not music playing everywhere and drinks flowing and food flowing and everybody's having a good time. No, he's snatching y'all in and out of rooms, separating you, you know, bending you over a couch with everybody around watching. It's a shame, yo. I this can't. This is a shame. Because he knows, he knows young people 
are going to make a very, they'll make that, that rash decision or they'll make that, that split, split second decision. It's a once in a lifetime. It's yep. R. Kelly. You it's gotta R go. Yeah. Girl, you better, look, you better go. Remember the one girl where her friend if was you like. you don't go, I'll go. That's what she said. So, and I understand. I understand yeah. the oh, opportunity. Yeah. I understand the or excitement. I understand the the uh, the you know the, the excitement around. Oh, he's so sexy, and you know I love his his music is so sexy, and you know, and wow, he thinks I'm sexy. Oh my God, you know. But he's still you, a man. He's a he's person. A man. He's a and human you, being. Yeah, and you're a child, and you are not ready for that. And Yes, I know there's a lot of people because I saw some people online talking about, you know, these girls are fast. That may be. You know what? Let's say this. Let's say every single girl that he came in contact with was a little fast girl. That still doesn't change the fact that he should have had discipline. Yeah. He should have had dignity. Absolutely. He should have had integrity, which is something that everybody in this story seems to be lacking at least mm. a little bit of. True. There true. is so much for our young people and so much for our society to learn from this when it considers celebrity culture. Just because somebody is a star don't mean nothing. Don't mean that they can do whatever they want to you, treat you however they like, and for the judicial system and the law enforcement does not mean that they just get to get away with whatever they want to. Yeah. It's this has been a true cautionary tale and I'm glad it exists. I I honestly think and I know this might be really rash for some mothers out there. But I think every girl between, say, 12 and 14 needs to watch this. Seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Watch this with their moms, watch it with their aunts, ask questions. And then for their moms and aunts to be honest about their past. Absolutely. Stop lying to your daughters. Absolutely. Stop lying to your nieces like you ain't never had sex except one time when you had them. Mm. Absolutely. That you never made bad decisions. And you, yeah. you know, you, you never, never screwed up. You never yeah. lied to your mom and you never lied. You was as perfect, perfect as driven snow. Right. I mean, yes. And I agree. I completely agree. And talk to these young girls and let them understand, make them understand that sex in and of itself is not a bad thing. Going out on, on dates with boys and kissing a boy and, and, you know, having that kind of like innocent the, affection. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. You have to you have to talk to them about what a healthy um, relationship looks like. Yeah. You have to show them what a healthy relationship looks like. Talk to them and say, there's nothing wrong with you having a yeah, friend when you're 12. To, it's nothing yeah. wrong with you going to a movie with a little boy and him coming over to see you. There's nothing wrong with you going out on a date and having a, a, a boyfriend. There's, it's nothing wrong. I'm not going to tease you and make you feel uncomfortable, you know, when your boyfriend comes over and y'all are holding hands and you're giggling. That's natural. That's healthy. Yes. That's normal. And we have to stop. That's something. What's oh, my not God. Normal. We have to stop doing that. Yeah. Because What's then not? we suppress those natural feelings and then they go out and sneak yeah. and do stuff. And then they get in a situation where they're pressured into doing more than they would have done yeah. if you had made them feel comfortable doing what is already natural and appropriate. Yeah. There, what's unnatural is a grown man yes. pursuing you. Absolutely. That's something that's unnatural. And you're pursuing girls that are at this peak age where they're still figuring out their bodies. Yeah. They're having all these different things going on with their bodies. Their bodies are changing. And I'm sorry, y'all going to, you know, it's going to make some people uncomfortable. Just like little boys are horny. Guess what? Little girls get horny too. And no one wants to say that. When was, when was the last time you ever heard anyone say that? 
And so you're dealing with these with these young girls. They're horny because they have hormones going on, yeah. just like boys do. And, and then, then you, you add in the celebrity part. Man, and they begin to understand the power of their bodies. Yeah. They 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 hear these boys making comments. They hear and then they hear these grown men making and then comments. They see television. They see magazines. Absolutely. They see, and they show that the the power of the female form. Right. And I mean, like I said, from the from uh, since the sun went up in the sky, you know, men. Women use their bodies, men use their position. Right. That's always and so like you that. have these situations where they they know all these different things and all these different changes and they're still trying to figure it all out. And then you have this predator. Yeah. Come and it's a horrible combination. You know, that's a time when these girls need to be so protected and so covered. And again, it's sad because it seems none of these girls are covered by anybody. Dad, uncle, auntie, mom, nobody. And, and that's like exactly who he goes after. There were brothers there, there were uncles there, you know, dads there, whatever. And none of them cared. <sighs> Guys, I... I think we ended on a ran, relatively good note on the last episode. <laughs> but this... Ain't no good this, note for this one. There's no good note except talk to your young people. Please. Please, please. Cover and, them. If no one understands what I mean by cover them, I mean be protective of them. Educate them. Explain to them why you're asking where they are, where they're going to be, where they're supposed to be, when they'll be back, who they're going to be with. Explain to them why. I'm not doing this because I just want to bug you and make your life miserable. Explain to them. That is called covering them. Make sure you, you know, have have people that they know they can go to. Auntie, uncle, sister, whoever that they can go to. Let them know they're looking out for you, too. That is called covering them. If you are a spiritual person, pray for them. So guys, look, before we bounce, uh, of course you can holler at me at that nerd soul, T-H-A-T-N-E-R-D-S-O-U-L. We will be here, of course, tomorrow for the finale of this you know, documentary series. It is very eye-opening and just confirming for a lot of stuff, but sad, deeply troubling, um, considering black culture and just the music industry, um, but definitely black culture. Um, seeing all the families that were involved in this and staying silent and stuff like that. So guys, of course, we thank you for listening. Thank you for hanging with, out with us. Uh, we can talk, of course, about anything in the comments. Of course, being respectful to one another and each other, especially if you're dealing with whatever you're dealing with. But until next time, this is from us to you saying peace. Peace. Peace.